Support for the Couples Council comes from Mercia Wellness and Consulting. Their purpose is to equip you with the right skills for a happy and healthy relationship. Services available in office or virtual. Schedule your consultation now. For more information, visit MerciaWellness.com. Mercia Wellness and Consulting. Small steps, big changes. This podcast is not a substitute for therapy. Please consult a licensed professional for your mental health needs. Now, now on, on with, with the, the show. show. Hello and welcome to the Couples Council. I'm your host, Dr. Jameson Mercier, the love mender, and I'm sitting alongside my lovely wife, Herdeen Mercier. Hey, y'all. The wife mentor. That is correct. Yeah, she's <laughs> kind of feeling herself because she's been having a good weekend. I did. I had an amazing weekend. I had an, um, my first interview by myself on a radio station representing the Wife It Ins brand. Yep, yep, yep. And I had you by my side supporting me. Taking pictures and video. Yes. You're amazing, honey. So if you guys missed that, hop onto our social media and you can catch snippets and we'll be sharing some of those sound bites for you. Um, so I do want to thank the ladies that had me on their show. Yes. The VSS show. Correct. Mm -hmm. Radio Mega. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sandra. And her crew, so you guys Vanessa are awesome. And Charlene, yes. Um, so thank you guys again for the work that you do. Uh, but that was the weekend. Now we want to turn and focus on another very interesting young lady. She goes by the name of LB. Yes, We're also known as the wife coach. Right. So this is this was a very fun interview very interesting for me because i almost saw it as the wife coach and the wife mentor battling it out <laughs> but they were more like sisters yeah we were battling it out but in a loving way dropping gems for our sister wives yeah they did yes they, you will see with this interview that we're about to replay how how uh just a double dose of wisdom between these two ladies. Yeah. Right. Um, so you definitely want to favorite this uh, after you're done. Go back and share it and subscribe. Tell your other girlfriends to check out not just a wife mentor, yeah. but the wife coach. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, me and LB were the main people on the scene for this interview. And Dr. J helped us out with his wisdom, too. We can't leave you out. Yeah, you know no, that. I, I was playing... <laughs> You know, producer <laughs> and tech guy. Right. But it was fun. It was fun. Um, we're talking about Lakia L.B. Brandenburg. She is wife to Derek and coach to wives. She is a two time best selling author who is committed to helping women who are married or planning to be married. She wants them to know the difference between being a married woman and being a dynamic wife. She empowers women to get rid of the fairy tale syndrome and create a more realistic vision for their marriage and their role as a wife. By tapping into the power of the P and knowing when to tame your tongue, her clients are taught how to live the happy wife life yes. and create their own picture perfect marriage. Guys, we told you it's going to be great, but listen for yourself to this interview. Kia Brandenburg, the wife coach and the wife mentor. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Couples Council. I am super excited because we're going to be having LB, also known as the wife coach, with us today. Dr. J is in the house. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Council. Now they've already, y'all didn't hear this, but they've already established that I'm just sitting here making sure the mics work and this is a conversation between the wife coach and the wife mentor. Yep, yep, so yep. if y'all happen to hear me on this talk at all, it will be a miracle. <laughs> um, well, we'll probably want some input for you, baby. We don't want right. you muted. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lakia, LB, yes, please yes. tell us your journey of becoming a wife and who is your prince? OMG. Well, let me just say, uh, the journey of becoming a wife actually started when I wrote my first book. 
Mm -hmm. um, picture perfect. He's not perfect. I'm not perfect, but together we're picture perfect. And I literally detailed the story of, of my prince, Derek, and how he and I, oh boy, went through this whole journey of trying to become Mr. and Mrs. Um, we had no idea after 10 years of dating on and off, makeups to breakups, all of that craziness, that we would actually somehow come together as husband and wife. Um, but it really took me understanding who I was as a woman first, really getting into you know my relationship with God, um, understanding what his purpose was for my life before I could actually consider myself wife worthy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so once I wrote the book, that literally was the tool that I started using to promote to other women. Like, look, y'all, I did it. Like my husband who didn't want to get married, Mm. He wanted to be, he wanted to be boyfriend and girlfriend forever because mm -hmm. marriage messed up everything. We mm -hmm. finally got together and created what we considered to be a picture perfect marriage. And so my book was an opportunity to show women that they could do it. And from there, that's how the wife coach was born because I became this, this, um, resource, so to speak, like, you know what LB? Okay. I like what you're saying. I like how you're talking about taking care of, of me and how taming my tongue is very important when it comes to my relationship with my man and understanding that there's a difference between being a married woman and being a wife. So those were the things that I was teaching and it just sort of caught on and the name wife coach was like an endearing title. And the next thing you know, the wife coach was born. And it's so needed. We know it's needed yes. because we know what we we hear behind behind the the Instagram pictures of Say couples. Mm -hmm. We hear the realness of what's really happening. Yes. And the beauty that we have is that we have the gift to helping the wives heal their heart. And I yes. love that process. I really love that process. And you know, I want to go into taming your tongue. Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about what that means to tame your tongue as a wife. <laughs> So it's funny because tame your tongue is one of those principles. You know how we learn as a wife, so many different things that we should be doing, so many different things that we shouldn't do. But that was one of those pieces of advice that I was taught by my chaplain. Like he literally was like, okay, you know, Lakia, LB, the way you talking to your man, you might want, you might want to check that because there's mm -hmm. no way you can have a successful relationship and your demeanor, your words, you're cutting your man. You don't even realize you're doing it. And so part of that journey, I had to take some self-reflection. Like, why do I talk the way I do? Where is this anger and this attitude coming from? And I had to even go back to scripture. Like, okay, life and death are in the mm -hmm. power of the tongue. So why mm -hmm. am I constantly speaking death to my man? So taming your tongue does not mean you don't have a voice. I mean, every Tuesday, so y'all know on Instagram, it's Tame Your Tongue Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to taming your, your tongue, it's about discipline. It's about knowing how to say what you need to say, knowing when to say what you need to say. And, and, and if, it's, if it needs to be reconsidered, does it need to be said at all? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we really just, we create wars with our words without realizing that if we just simply think before we speak, if we really process it, if we really understand where it's coming from, then most of the time we won't say it. And we will save so much grief. We will save so much heartache. So that was and still is probably one of the most valuable lessons I've learned and has literally transformed how my husband and I communicate with each other. Now, now you have to allow me to just chime in. Come on, Dr. J. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little curious, right? Because you make it sound like, oh, yeah, he told me I had to tame my tongue and it was in a, in a snap of a finger. It was done. <laughs> ah, one, ah. I, one, I'm curious as like, if you don't mind giving us an example as to what 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 your husband was what he had to endure <laughs> can we go that's good no that's good dr j that's really good so for me it was simply not knowing okay for example if he were to come into the house and he was five minutes late and i'm like you're always late you know not even oh, what's man. making him late uh -huh. what's making him you know tardy for the party whatever it was i never considered that it was always what I thought. I was mm -hmm. always concerned about how I felt. And so I had to learn to wait a minute, back up, hold up. First of all, when you say you never or you always, those are trigger words. No such he ain't thing. listening to nothing I'm saying, but those, <laughs> like, wait a minute, I'm always late. That's what mm -hmm. you're saying. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, those were just some of those, those examples or just trying to hit below the belt, just to be honest with you, you know, just feeling hurt. So I wanted to hurt you. So I would say wow. things that maybe wouldn't, you know, shouldn't be said or thought about. But again, 
it wasn't him. It was me understanding how, where that was coming from and mm -hmm. why I needed to tame my tongue. So those are just a few examples um, yeah. that I would, you know, actually do in my relationship that I had to check. I had to. And I, I appreciate you expounding on that because there are times when we do provoke each other. Mm -hmm. yes. And it may have been that, hey, he was doing some things too and you were countering, but it sounds like yeah. he might have been an innocent, uh, 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 All right, Dr. J. A lot of those. <laughs> you know. I mean, uh, so I'm just saying. Yeah. No, but you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I was more abrupt with my words. I was more like in your face, and he wasn't as, as much as I was. I, mm -hmm. And I had to go back to my household. I grew up in a household where my parents were very verbal. Um, mm. It was verbal abuse. It was mental abuse. It was physical abuse. So all of those different things I witnessed and I didn't realize that I had packed some of that into my luggage and that was my baggage. Wow. So when I got into a, a disagreement with my husband, that's the first thing I knew to do. Let me, yeah. let me go for the belt. You know what yeah. I mean? Let me, let me hit you where it hurts. Wow. And, and didn't, and I'm just the same man I want love from. This is the same man I want to, you know, to respect me and love me, but yet mm. I'm disrespecting him. So how, how that, that work? Time, how, how that going to work? <laughs> Um, you don't know how they, where they do that at? Where they do that at, Doc? So, Man. yeah, I had to get that in check. I had to. Good for you. And you know what? Guys, and I say this to women all the time, your man, your husband, your boyfriend, you are the last, like, he, you are the last person he wants to fight with. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. No matter what, you are the last person he wants to fight with because hmm. you're home. Hmm. Your home, your comfort, you know, your peace. That's, that's, yes. that's what you ought to symbolize. But if he can't even come home. Can't walk through the door. Can't walk through that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, and that, you, it's, a, it's crazy that you're saying this, Dr. J, because I just did a live on Instagram and I was talking about how there's literally one thing we can do when um to shift our marriage just one simple thing we can do to instantly shift shift our marriage and they were like okay thinking it was going to be deep and i said smile let's start mm. by that when your man walks through the door are you you know your, does your face say why are you here <laughs> does your face yeah. say you get on my nerves <laughs> does your body language you know does it make it feel like he he's not welcomed in his own space and mm. if we just simply smile something as simple as tapping into our feminine power like literally just smiling where, hey, baby, how you doing? How was your day? You know, those different things, giving him that type of energy, that shifts the atmosphere in your household to where he wants to come home now. Yeah. He's not sitting in the car contemplating. Okay, she's oh. going to be crazy. She, oh, she's mad. Lord. You know, the kids, are they going to be running around crazy? Wow. With them, you know? <laughs> so I think that's just important. I love that you said that because literally it's, I was just sharing that. It's mm -hmm. so true, LB, because when you think about our Black men, Yes. And the things that they have to endure just being outside in normal society. Yes. You know, they need to know that our home is that safe haven mm -hmm. where they can let go, really show their emotions, be able yes. to express themselves freely without feeling like they're weak, you know, yes. or they're less than because they mm -hmm. get it from outside anyway. And so yes, one of the things that I I'm just thinking about my own personal story and being married, I think divorce came up for us because I was so afraid of getting to the point of, I hate you, Dr. J. You mm -hmm, get on my mm -hmm. nerves. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh no, oh no. I think, I think it's time that I must jump through, <laughs> jump off the cliff because I've never hated you before. But in this right. season right yes, now, season. boy, you are really getting on my nerves. Yes. And I didn't know, I didn't know. I, I mean, yes. I've always been in a healthy relationship with him, mm -hmm. but we came into the season where it was kind of scary. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I thought it was time to jump off the cliff and it wasn't. I just needed to be embraced that yes. right now I do feel a little resentment towards you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so instead of jumping off the cliff, let's talk about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how anybody could hate me. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jay so cool, you know, he's so cool. But you know what I love that you said that it's a season. And so if wives can discern the season that they're in, not looking at it as, okay, well, shoot, we're not getting along this season. So that means throw the towel in. No, let's get deep. This is where that deeper intimacy comes from. This is how you 20 years later can look back and be like, babe, we done been through some stuff, but I still like you, boo. I mm -hmm. like you. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just really understanding that seasons change, people change. So whatever it is God has for me in this season or for us, 
in this season. Let's figure out what that is so that we can go to the next level in our relationship. Yeah. yeah. Young, and- young wives and young marriages are particularly susceptible to that because yes. five years and under, even sometimes like about mm-hmm. seven years and mm-hmm. under, they just talk about some crazy mess. Like it ain't working. And I'm like, you better be started. <laughs> it, ain't working. it ain't supposed to be working yet. <laughs> Y'all ain't go nowhere, you know? And so you got to talk them back and, and, and like say, y'all, y'all in danger of like, you expect too much too soon. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes. so when they finally slow down and they're like, oh, you mean to tell me yeah. this is normal? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, normal is one thing. Common is another thing. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and, and I think that's why we created this platform, because I think too many times couples are on social media. They're yes. seeing everybody else, but they're not seeing people behind closed doors. Very true. When you present online, you're always going to present that perfect pose. Hello. And that happy smile. Mm-hmm. So how do you present in an honest way to say, we're not gelling today, but you know what? I still love my boo. Exactly. And that is why Jay and I are on a mission with this platform, not just a couple's council, but seeing people yes. virtually or in our office, that your marriage, you need to be able to pre- create your story for your marriage, period. Mm. Yes. Not your mama's story, not your daddy's story, not your grandparents' story, but your story for yourselves. And yes. creating that story, you got to create your own guidelines and what it's going to look like. Exactly. That's what Picture Perfect is. Did you read the book? <laughs> I got to get exactly, the book. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it's about. It's really creating marriage is what you created to be. Mm-hmm. Your marriage is not going to look like the next couples. It shouldn't look like the next couples because you're two different individuals that mm-hmm. are trying to, you know, create something that's for you. That's that's beautiful for you. I love that my husband and I, you know, we met at 19. I was 19. He was 20. Um, he's 40. I'll be 40 next year. But just to see within these 20 years, the things that we have come through, the things that we have grown, um, I've learned how to be a little more sweeter, you know, to really understand that being hard is not necessary in your relationship and really trying to figure out where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Me trying to be hard was to protect myself because I didn't want to be vulnerable because I didn't want to be hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's like really this whole journey of marriage, it's one of the, the best things that's ever happened to me because it will mature you or it will expose the immaturity in you. Mm. And so I just thank God for that. I thank God for me being exposed, but then his grace, you know, that I can mature in it all, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I constantly tell people marriage is a microscope on who you are, mm-hmm. not that other person. And mm-hmm. so if marriage is the microscope of who you are, it's going to allow you to really look at yourself and see what ideas you need to release. One of the pillars that I teach wise is you have to be able to release the pain to activate the dream. Yes. So you have to be able to release that pain to activate your dream, but you have to have the tools and the willingness to do it and move forward. And now you talk about this P. Please tell us about what the P is. Let's get into the P. I don't think Dr. J know what the P is, but you're going to learn about the P today. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just an innocent bystander. Now now, you want to to check the mic. Yeah, the the microphone look like it's on. It's working. I got you, Jay. I got you, Dr. J. Okay, well, I always like to tell, I like to remind my wives that there's power in the P. And whenever I say that, most people, you know, they may think something else. But I'm talking about position. I'm talking about the position of a wife. You know, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. And so if you really understand what you are as this good thing, you your man is going to find a he, he's going to find favor with the Lord. Like he and you together are going to create this amazing dynamic. But you got to really understand the power that you have as a wife. Um a lot of times women get married and they're operating as married women. Like okay, the the energy, the excitement was placed into getting married. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of being engaged, the whole idea of having a beautiful wedding that's all about me. But then after that day goes away and your your guests go home, then it's like, no, you're a wife for the rest of your life. Now, are you going to step into that position or are you going to remain, you know, just kind of like in la la land and and having this fantasy of what marriage is supposed to be and realizing that, okay, wait a minute, this is real. Like, I'm not going to be happy every day. Wait a minute, hold up. You know? My, my husband is, is really going to leave the toilet seat up and it's going to drive me crazy. I mean, mm-hmm. this is real. So 
I think it's important for us to, to, again, understand all married women aren't wives. And when you tap into the power of the P, that's when you start seeing the, the peace, the, the happiness, the, the joy, the things that we truly want in our relationship. You understand how to tap into it because you're playing your position. Yeah, there's one thing that's clear to me. So when I see couples, and I, and, I, and I, so I see couples, so we'll see them together, couple sessions, and then we'll see, I'll see them individually in the whole process of working with couples. And I have, sometimes I have to say to some of these wives, I have to say, you're playing it all wrong. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is why, you know, in counseling, sometimes it's good for a wife to see a male counselor. And for yes. a male counselor to see a, a, a husband to see a female counselor, yes. because they can give you some of that insight that even if your wife was telling you, you ain't going to listen because mm-hmm. there's history there. Mm-hmm. But I've had to tell some wives, sweetheart, listen, like this is what your husband is thinking, but either doesn't want to tell you, is mm-hmm. afraid to tell you, mm-hmm. don't think you can handle it, don't even want to like hear your feedback, whatever it is, this is what's going on with him. Yeah. And unless you do some things, right. That's, it's not all your fault. Y'all ain't never going to change. Yeah. You know what? It's so true because typically I have like a real buzz cut and I have to go to my barber and there's so many things they know I'm known as the wife mentor. And so Mm -hmm. this is the time I have honest chats with the guys at the barber shop. And one thing I have learned over the years in going to the barbershop is the guy will never tell you, but he wants to be celebrated. Yes, he does. He will never tell you. And I think oftentimes the wives are always thinking about themselves. Like they want their door to be open. They want Mm -hmm. the roses. Mm -hmm. They want the surprise date night. Mm -hmm. He wants it too. Yep. It all depends why she got married. Yeah. Yeah. He wants it too. So we have to feed in like he deposits into us. We yes. have to deposit right back into them in a positive way. Absolutely. Because so many times I think the fairy tale tells us he is going to provide everything mm-hmm. for us. And what we don't see in the fairy tales is that the that they need to. They have needs as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. And you got Disney to blame for all of that foolishness. <laughs> <Don't Because laughs> Because there's not a Disney story where you see, and I can't think of it. Somebody let me know. Shrek. Let, sh- Shrek. Uh, let me tell you why. <laughs> okay. Because tell us Shrek, why. Shrek puts a spin on the traditional Cinderella prince, you know, rescuing the woman from the, the tower. Because mm-hmm. when Shrek, when she shows up, she has her idea of what she thinks or who she thinks is supposed to be rescuing her from the tower. But then Shrek shows up and it's like, okay, well, wait a minute. He shakes her. Have you know, I mean, you got to watch this cartoon. Can't, can't be him. Right, he right. Give her this little soft, precious kiss. He shakes her like, get up, girl, let's go. The, uh-huh. the, the dragon coming, let's go. <laughs> and, and the funny thing, I tell my, my single women, your, your Prince Charming might be Shrek. Oh, they get mad. Oh, mm. they don't and nobody want to hear that. They don't want to hear that because immediately they're thinking looks. And I'm like, no, I'm talking about package. He may show up totally different than you expect him to, but he still provides you everything you need. And and you're providing him, or you should be able to provide him what he needs. But everybody wants that whole Prince Charming. He's going to sweep me off my feet. I don't have to do anything. He's going to take care of me. Like he was saying, my wife mentor. And no, it's supposed to be uh, you give, I give. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not give and take. You give and I give because if we're constantly giving to each other, there's no need to take. We're both mm-hmm. being filled. Right. Yeah. Right. I like so, that. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Well, aside from Shrek, Disney just messing everybody <laughs> up. <laughs> Yeah. All these princesses sitting around waiting for Prince Charming. Yes. When, the, when the prince gonna be sitting around waiting for princesses? I'm you. You know? I don't know. I don't we know. Write that one. We may have to write that one. Y'all. I always say blame Disney. Blame Disney, but <laughs> but that's what we're actually feeding. Um, yeah. that's what actually is being fed to us. Absolutely. And then what happens is we finished plan for our big day. I can remember yeah. coming in on my horse and carriage, mm-hmm. marry my boo, Dr. J, mm-hmm. but then reality hit afterwards. Oh, Maybe I had to put in work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. And so for you and being married over 10 years, what kind of work you had to put in? Well, I'll just say it'll be it'll be ten years next year. Uh And we were just talking about that. We had date night last night, and we were talking about oh my goodness, like we literally have been we've been together off and on for twenty, 
but we've been married going on 10. And the work that we've had to put in, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, a lot of the work started in our premarital education. And say that, say thinking, that again. Say that a, again. A lot of the work started in our premarital education. And like you mm -hmm. said, Dr. J, our chaplain is a man. We still to this day see our chaplain. And he's the one that told me, look, you can't be talking to your man crazy. So me hearing it from him, me hearing it from my, I like to call him my fairy godfather as well. He was a deacon mm -hmm. at my church. Mm -hmm. Hearing it from a male's perspective helped me to understand. Mm -hmm. Another woman couldn't tell me that. So that's mm -hmm. why LB has a hard time telling my ladies now to tame your tongue. Because mm -hmm. they're like, well, you telling me I can't uh -huh. talk the way I want to talk. Yeah, yeah. You, uh -huh. you, need, you, need, you need to get a, a male wife coach just exactly. to tell them the exactly. things that you they You're don't right. listen. You're it's right. Crazy. It's insane how that happens. It is. It is. But it's okay, though, because I mm -hmm. really feel like the ladies are starting to receive what I have to say. Once Go they ahead. start practicing those principles and they start DMing me and booking sessions, I'm like, see, I told y'all stick with me. We yeah. go on places. Mm -hmm. But over these 10 years, within that um, first year, like I said, instead of getting ready for a wedding, my chaplain literally sat down with us and said, don't set a date. We're working. We got work to do. And mm -hmm. we went to school. We were meeting my chaplain weekly for almost a year, really understanding what, first of all, who we were as individuals, looking at our backgrounds, looking mm -hmm. at where we were coming from, our mindsets. We had been dating for literally almost, I think at that time, close to 10 years. So he was unpacking all of that. He was looking at, okay, do you even understand what a wife is? Do you understand what a husband is? Do y'all know what marriage is? So mm -hmm. we were getting educated. I mean, we really were getting educated for the positions that we were about to step into. We get prepared for everything we do in life. Literally, mm -hmm. we go to school. We want to become a doctor. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to put in my time, my coursework, all of that, my residency, all of that to yeah. make sure that I get that position. So why not do the same thing for husband and wife? This is probably one of the most important positions that you will be in to tie your life to somebody else. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. So yeah. that year was the hardest. So when we went into our actual first year of marriage, when everybody else ready to call it quit, <laughs> we were good. We were like, you know what? We've already had our breakups to make up. We've already, mm -hmm. you know, looked at each other and said, you know what? Do we really want to do this? And mm -hmm. so um, that was one of the best ways to set the foundation of our marriage. Um, we've had our spit and spats here and there. Communication is always an a, a art. Yes. Look, yes. an art that needs to be mastered. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we will ever master it, but we are getting better with over communicating me with taming my tongue mm -hmm. that that always you know was something even though I am much better than I used to be that was one of the challenges that we had when it came to communicating because it got to the point where Derek didn't feel like he could talk to me mm -hmm. so he wouldn't share things with me and he would do certain things prime example this just happened two years ago my husband purchased a business long I'm gonna give you all a short story purchased a business without my consent Okay, mm. now that's a huge issue um, because it's dealing with finances, it's dealing with lack of communication. However, when I really sat down after being upset with my husband and we actually got to talk about it, I realized that I had created a barrier where he couldn't come to me to share any of his dreams, any of his, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So even though wow. he still feels that he was, a, he was wrong when in retrospect for doing that, it was all in good intent. Yeah, because it was yeah. our business. It was something he was doing that he knew I would have talked him out of because I didn't like to listen. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear that. That was putting a mirror in my face. Um, that hurt. I'm going to be honest with you. It really hurt my, my feelings, but it hurt me so much that I was like, Dad, what have I done in my actions that my husband can't even come to me and be like, look, boo, I got this idea. Let's look at this. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a hurdle that we had to get over. And it made me really look at me and say, okay, you have to be approachable. You have to come to a point where your husband can talk to you about anything. Even if you disagree, he needs to feel comfortable coming to you. So that again, was one of those challenges that we had, but we got over it and we got through it um, and learned a lot about each other through the process. Good, good. You know, when we talk about couples and their marriage, one thing I always say, your marriage needs to be a space where it's, it needs to be a safe space, right? We need to yes. be able to make these mistakes and we need to be able to share what's on our mind. Because if, if when I step into our marriage, yes, I can't uh, spill milk, for example, or break mm -hmm. a plate or drop mm -hmm. a glass, mm -hmm. we got a problem. 
Yes. You know, I'm not like, I'm not six years old spilling milk and getting scolded. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. And no man want to feel like that. No man wants to feel, feel like he married his mother. Hello. So we have to be careful. But as we're talking about it, I'm thinking not just taming your tongue, but your body language. <laughs> Say it. Because if he comes to you and you're already rolling your eyes before yes. he even f- completes the sentence, oh, yeah. that's a whole different ball yes, game. From, from how your how you sh- how your shoulders, if your shoulder goes down once he says something. Mm, it, mm. I mean, but he's looking at every fiber of your being when he opens yep. his mouth. So we do yep. have to be careful you, with that. You, you know, you know, that's that, good. That, that used to be something that every now and then we got to go through this because, uh-huh. you know, counselor to counselor, uh-huh. I'll say something to Hardine and then I get the, I get the looks and I said, <laughs> stop being defensive. <laughs> She's like, I ain't said nothing. I said, I right, know, right. but it's loud. Oh yeah. It, I hear it loud and clear, <laughs> you know? And so, I have to stand there and wait for her to drop her arms. <laughs> and, you know, we laugh about it and it's kind of cute of here course. and there, but we all do it. No one is immune to it is mm-hmm, the point yes. I'm trying to make, mm-hmm. you know, it's a constant, constant work. In marriage, we always say this shines a light on that. Yes. Yes. You know, you want to keep that mess in the dark. It's like, oh no, you still got mm-hmm. this issue. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. true. And so one of the pillars I teach women is how to remove. And that's that season where you unpeel and unpack. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Your, body, your body language and taming your tongue yes. falls all under that. How do you unpeel and unpack some of these bad habits? And it really takes, it, marriage is not um, built. I want to say marriage is not built in a day, but marriage is built daily. Yeah, that, that came from a previous. That came that came from a previous um, interview that we in, did. Interview that that's we good. did, and so if marriage is built daily, our personalities as well takes daily yes. growth. Absolutely. But it, but you have to be aware of it, and that's how important Keyword. it is to have reflection in your marriage, mm-hmm. not just about your spouse, but about yourself. Yes. Absolutely. And so that's what I'm always thinking about. That's beautiful. No, it, it definitely, I always tell my wives, you know, the whole happy wife life, you know, we hear that, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm telling them this really has nothing to do with your husband. And they're looking at me like, what? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, happiness starts with you. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be able to make yourself happy before you expect anybody else. And first mm-hmm. of all, why are you giving somebody else that responsibility? Mm-hmm. He should be complimenting your happiness. And he wants to see you happy. There is no man that wants to see his woman frowning, fussing, you know, nagging, just mm-hmm. always, you know, panties in a bunch for lack of better words. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's her demeanor. And he's trying to figure out, well, what's wrong? If you don't know what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I I think it's just important. Like you said, that's self-reflection. I always go back to you. Yes, he may have done this, but let's talk about your reaction. Let's Mm -hmm. talk about your body language. Like you said, let's talk about the tongue. What did you say? Maybe it was a word you said, and you knew that would hit below the belt, and you knew that would start something. So you said it. Mm -hmm. And then you try to take your hands off and play victim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, women, women just, they (laughs) they just be stirring up stuff. (laughs) Man. And men are just so innocent, honey. Oh, oh, They're yeah. just so innocent. I know, Dr. <laughs> man. And, and men are just so innocent, right? We, listen, all, all, all we want to do is love our women. <laughs> you know? you know? Listen, a, a while back I saw a movie. I don't know if it's a movie or a song. The guy said, you know, I, uh, a sister with an attitude, right? Uh-huh. Think that a sexy. He said, that's sexy. A sister with an attitude. And then you think back and you go, well... Not too much attitude, exactly right. you know. <laughs> not too much. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Um, because it, 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 it is work. Uh-huh. It is work. And when you guys were talking about, um, why would you put that responsibility on your husband, your happiness, right? Yes. And listen, like to the women that's listening, uh, who don't know this, don't know men want that responsibility. I'm so- Hello. Listen, that is that is hard because mm-hmm. the brother trying to figure himself out. And yeah. now you putting all your stuff mm-hmm. on his plate. And, and, you know, we said this in the beginning. He got work. He got the man. He got demands. He got, mm-hmm. you know, everybody on him. And now he has to think about how to make you happy. Right. 
that pressure does a number on marriages. Mm. You know, oftentimes I tell wives and I say, you know, your husband is not the plug. And they look at me like, what? What do you mean? Your Uh husband is not the plug to your happiness. Mm. And too many times we try to put him in a socket to give us that joy. And it's not going to work. You're always going to have, it's not, it's just basically not going to work. It's not. Because he can be bringing you the flowers. He Mm -hmm. can be taking you out to trips. Mm -hmm. You can be going everywhere. But if you're not happy, Mm -hmm. no matter what happens, no matter what he does, it's not going to work. Mm. So your happiness does have to come from you. And it's not that he's not trying. And he's not. It's just nothing he's going to do is going to work. Exactly. And there's nothing sexier to a man than a happy woman. Hello. So that's my idea. A, a happy, Ain't that right, Dr. J? Go ahead. A, tell a, a Go happy, tell confident <laughs> woman. Thank you. Right? Yes. When I walk into the room, you know who you are. I look at you. It's like, all right, you straight, boo. Yeah. We good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I see. I see you tonight. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I see you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Man. Yeah, and it's beautiful. funny. In, in 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 the beginning, we we had. I, I remember this conversation where I think uh, we were talking about the expectation, which is something else that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. comes out in the pre premarital education. Wives do expect the husbands to fix the issues, right? Where they see yep. the marriage as a, a solution to some of these past problems, mm-hmm. you know, the loneliness, the isolation, some of the stuff, the hurt you were talking about, LB. Yes. And I think when we realized that on some level, we had some of these expectations early on, it changed things for us. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it was a hard pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then we can stop pretending. Ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. And, it, Those- and, it, and it allows you to remove the mask. And typically what happens, what I, I see the pattern of, okay, I got married. I'm still not happy. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe maybe it's time we have a child. Oh, maybe mm. that baby gonna bring that happiness. Oh boy! No. And that and it doesn't. And nope. so that's why, like again, this is a platform to give you the realness, real yes. relationships, real problems, real solutions. Yes. And this is the honesty that this platform, the Couples Council, for me, provides people. Absolutely. Um, I don't. I don't know what it is. Like you said, Doctor J, is that that Disney. Um, mindset. I think a lot of people are still holding on to the fantasy of marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, They're still holding on to the fairy tale. And I tell women all the time, get rid of the fairy tale syndrome. That's Mm -hmm. a real syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like your expectations are unrealistic. There is nothing worse than getting married and then realizing that everything you had in your mind is not what you're seeing on a day-to-day basis. Like seriously, Boy. This is not marriage. Like marriage isn't what I thought. It's not the movies. It's mm-hmm. not Love Jones. This is mm-hmm. not, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, but see, like you said, Doc, when you when you get rid of that mask and you can truly be stripped down into your your really intimate. Like when I say intimacy, I'm thinking, you know, I'm naked and I can just be vulnerable and let you know mm-hmm. who I am. This is who I am. Take me mm-hmm. as I am. Please take me as I am. You know, mm-hmm. um, right. that's a beautiful thing to be mm-hmm. able to connect with another individual like that because you can't have that you shouldn't have that kind of intimacy and connection with anybody but your spouse um but when you i I think that's what it is a lot of people get caught up in the whole syndrome of of this is supposed to be beautiful and blissful and i'm supposed to be happy every day and he's supposed to bring me flowers you know i i I like flowers if if they're edible you know Mm -hmm. like seriously Mm -hmm. i don't need flowers to make Mm -hmm. me happy if my husband brought me a an edible arrangement hey I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Right? My husband put Starburst on the windowsill, y'all. Like he put Starburst on the windowsill. Do you know how happy I thought I got a Chanel bag? <laughs> That's how how cool we are. Like mm-hmm. I filled the car up with gas before I brought the car back to him. Little mm-hmm. stuff like that. Hello, hello. Amazing. You hear that, ladies? Mm-hmm. Little stuff hello. like that makes a happy marriage. And so I think that's when I got real. I got rid of the the, the fairy tale syndrome because I had it too. Mm-hmm. And realize that what my, my marriage is what I created to be. And that's what Derek and I are doing. Like you said, it's mm-hmm. not built. It's not built. What you say? It's not built. Not built in a day. It's, it's built day. in a day, but it's built, it's daily. built daily. daily. That's what we're doing on a daily basis. 
Man. It, but it's not just we talk about for us, we always tell couples you need to do love checks in just like you do an annual visit to the doctors. Yep. You do um, you may every six months, you make sure your mileage, you do an oil change. What about your love story? Maintenance. Yes. Yeah, you got to do the maintenance. And in mm -hmm. doing the maintenance, you are really going to learn about your spouse. Yes. Like for me, opening the door for Jay, hey, pass through, I see you. It's me <laughs> celebrating him yeah. as my spouse. That's one thing I'm key on. I have to celebrate him. I love it. I have to make sure that I invest in him. It's a surprise <laughs> trip. I've already packed your bags. We're heading somewhere. Oh. Vice versa. I yes. don't, for me, the idea of being the wife is doing everything he would do. And it's yes. back and forth. Teach him. Teach it's, him it, it, it's this back and forth. We do it, you do it, and we yeah. do it together in love. I think yeah. we both win that way. Yeah, we've kind of beautiful. Yeah, we've kind of turned it into a game almost. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to see who's gonna <laughs> healthy what's, competition. What's, yeah, what's gonna come next? Yeah, you know? I love that's but that that's what keeps your marriage exciting. Yeah. That's what keeps it spicy. Last night yeah. I actually planned our date night. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my husband didn't know we were going to a museum here in Atlanta. It was um it's a trap museum, y'all. It's trap museum. <laughs> <laughs> he has museum. But it was so cool because he, you know, that's his era, that's who we grew up nice. in hip hop. Uh -huh. And um, just to plan that, and he was like, baby, I really enjoyed it. We went with a couple of friends and it was just so much fun, but little stuff like that, that's what yeah. matters. Yeah. That's right there. That's what keeps your marriage going strong and, you know, just reinventing the wheel. Like you guys said, it gets to a, a healthy competition. Like what are we going to do next? You know, mm -hmm. what, what you want to do this weekend? Just trying new things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing when you could share this with, you know, your, your spouse. Yeah. And, and it, it, it only happens once you accept and embrace the fact that you're gonna have to put in some work. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm still trying to beat your 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 whole wedding renewal in Bahamas. Yeah. I haven't been able Whoa. to do that. Okay, Dr. But J. Dr. J did Keep that trying. one. Keep <laughs> I don't know yeah. how he did Keep it. Trying. Wow. Serious yeah. planning. And all I knew the next oh. day I was in Bahamas, my family and my kids were there. Wow. And we were renewing our vow. Like he's good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's you're, good. You're like right. I've done some trips. You know what but I'm he's saying? Good. Now yeah, you get all the brownie points. She, she, she is not on my level. <laughs> you know, I got the oh, kids. Oh, y'all are fun. I, I got the kids' passports and everything. Oh, that is what's up. Yeah, yeah. that one, I, I'm going to do it. See, see, look I at you. Stuff. Yeah, that is all. Awesome. got a smile on your face. That is beautiful. That and is so, but, and, and for me, this is the realness of it. I'm not trying to compare yes. my relationship to anybody else. Yeah. I think that is very, that's where you can look at someone's relationship and go, I like that. Yes. You know, they know how to surprise each other. Let, mm -hmm. I, I may not be able to do it with their pockets. Right. But I, right, can, right. Do it, I can do it with mine. Mm -hmm. And it still brings a spouse, it brings a smile on my spouse's face. Yes. I think too many times people get into this thing. I got to do it just like them. No, yes. you don't. Hashtag relationship goals, right? Oh, uh -huh. can, we, can we get rid of that? Can we get rid of that? <laughs> I mean, come on. That's so like, okay, they've been hashtagging relationship goals with Cardi B and her husband. Mm -hmm. Now look what's going on. Yeah. Yep. You think, yep. but but stop looking at these pictures of what you think it's supposed to look like. Yeah. Right. And create your own. Yeah. I think because the pictures bring on back to what we talked about are the fairy tales. Yep. They have not learned, LB, how to release the fairy tales. No, they haven't. They haven't. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Until they do, they won't be free. That's all no. I have to say. You got that right. No, they got to embrace yeah. their own fairy tale, like we're saying. And even with the relationship goals hashtag, you know, how about we hashtag sharing like a sandwich or something? Mm -hmm. You know, yes. like it ain't, it, it ain't got to be us in, in, in feet. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, come on now. Let's, how about hashtag relationship goals we taking a walk at the park hello you know like hashtag free dates like yeah. come on hashtag starburst in the window seal that's mm -hmm. what i'm talking about that's, that's what i'm and and i think love starts in these small bites 
Yes. Period. Because for me, my favorite date, we've been in all kinds of restaurants, all kinds of things, but my favorite date is still my peanut butter and jelly date that he prepared for us on the college campus because I saw him prepare that sandwich. When I tell you Dr. J took out the fork and put that <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, took his time with it, took the foil paper oh, and yeah. sealed it, I yes. knew. And then when we met on that college campus, the conversation we had, I said, this is going to be my husband. Ooh, she already knew. I knew because it was the time. It was the effort. It was the mm-hmm. thought. Yes. Yes. That he took for Absolutely. that date that made everything to me solidified that he loves me. Yes. Peanut butter and jelly, baby. We'll do it Go sometime. ahead, Dr. J. <laughs> From I'm just making it. I'm just making it. I'm just <laughs> I'm just making sure these mics work. Y'all, can, y'all, y'all hearing everything loud and clear? It look like everything's working to me. Oh my goodness. Y'all are so much fun. I love this. Oh this, my gosh. I will tell you, um, LB, to death do us part is going to be a journey. Yes. And, and what, ha- what vow have you made before we close um, to yourself as a wife? Wow. I have vowed as a wife. Wow. First to understand that LB, there's a difference between being a married woman and being a wife. That's the first thing. Me, un- me being aware. We talked about awareness. Mm-hmm. And so knowing that if I step into my position as a wife, that nothing, no blessing will, will leave me. No blessing will not come over and cover my marriage. Um, me praying for my husband, me wanting to be I guess the best wife I can for Derek, because I'm nobody's wife but Derek's wife. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So if I can truly be the best wife for Derek, he's going to be the best husband for LB. And we both are going to continue to grow and do some amazing things together. Like life mm-hmm. is going to continue to get better as we continue to pour into each other. So that's a vow that I've made. Um, and I got to make sure I let him know that too. because <laughs> <laughs> We got to be on the same page, but mm-hmm. that's the vow I've definitely made. Good. And, you know, even if y'all get there at different times, yes. you know, it's not, it's not a conditional thing. Yes. You know, I've had to tell couples, listen, you can't make your love conditional, uh-huh. you know, conditional love don't last. Right. So. You know. And it seemed like people don't know that until the conditions arise. Uh-huh. You know, it's like mm-hmm. once conditions happen, then it's like, wait a minute, hold up. But you said unconditional love. Mm-hmm. But here's a condition that's going to test that unconditional love. You know, oh, yeah. so mm-hmm. that's the thing. Those seasons. Those but seasons you know what? You know. It's that thought that it won't happen to me. The things that I'm thinking about, and when it does happen, it's like, oh shoot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think this was gonna happen to us. Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I, you have to warn couples like, don't get too caught up on for better or worse because mm-hmm. it's only the worst you can imagine. Mm-hmm. But trust me, y'all. There are a lot more worses out there. Yeah, that's good. Trust and believe. That's good. Mm-hmm. And so everybody's struggle in marriage is different. Everybody's yes. love story is different. Everybody experiences of how they got into fell in love is different. Yes. And it's and it's 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 a seed that has been planted from our parents. And so mm. you now have to unpack your parents' seed. Yes. And then pack your seed of love mm-hmm. and let that blossom. But it's the it's that is that area of unpacking our parent seed that is going to be your biggest challenge. And now you have your parent seed. He has his parent seed. Yes. You got two seeds y'all got to unpack. Then let the work begin. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there is, there's going to be that season where you don't need to cut off some weeds and, and, and cause it's going to suffocate your marriage if you take your parents stuff into it. And I mean, yeah, it's a lot of work, but if we've said we're going to be here forever, Mm-hmm. What the hell is the problem? Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, anything we, worth having is worth working for, right? We ain't, mm-hmm. we ain't going nowhere. So mm-hmm. what if it takes some time? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. I love that. Mm-hmm. And when people hear that, they're like, oh, man, you mean in 20 years? I'm like, listen, quiet. Like, leave now if you don't want to do the work. But exactly. don't ever think you're going to wake up one day uh-huh. and not have to put in any work. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So That's it. people need to be reminded of that. 
That's good. Listen, I'm just looking up at my clock, and it's look like it's looking like <laughs> our time has just flown. Oh yes. wow, that was quick, man! But it was quick and insightful. I this, love that. This. Was awesome. Very good. It yes. was very good. Listen, before we let you go, we need to know. So you told us about the book. Yes. Anything else you want our listeners to know? That anything they can benefit from. Absolutely. Well, as the wife coach, of course, I prepare, I educate, and I empower women before and after they get married. And so I offer coaching sessions for those women who are ready to become a wife. Um, some women don't understand how to be a wife. And mm -hmm. so I do offer wife and training. It's a two hour intensive um, that they can book through my website, lakiabrandenburg.com forward slash book dash your dash session um and then my second book the tiara is also available through my website that's for my wives who want to know mm. how to reign as queen mm. of their castle and let me nice. go ahead and give y'all a little tip the t stands for tame your tongue so i just need you to understand <laughs> that you need to get that book especially if you know you're going to trip up on that first principle but those mm. um as well as picture perfect is available through my site um and my booking sessions of course all that info was on my site as well Okay. And of course, the, all those links will be in our show notes. Um, and we'll have, listen, it's too much for you to repeat, but check it out. Uh, yeah. We'll have it all there and they can click on it directly and stay in touch with you. Please Thank do not you. forget, you can do sessions with her as well. Um, you can find her under the wife coach. Um, I really enjoyed this. Anytime I meet another wife who does what I do, yes. I'm just like, yes, there's another person that can plot. Um, deposit this seed of positivity in realness. Yes. It's Thank the you. key is realness. And so Real. I'm, realness. Like I'm <laughs> never threatened that we do because too many times they say sisters don't work together. I do believe sisters can work together. Yes, we do. And um there's so many there's like a billion of us on this planet. I cannot do it by myself. Hello. And so if you connect with LB, please contact her and help her. Allow her to teach you how to tame your tongue. Learn something. <laughs> Learn something. Learn some things, people. <laughs> y'all are amazing. Thank y'all so much for having me. This has been so much fun. Like, you guys are awesome. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. And now before we, we're going to put you in the hot seat. And one, <laughs> and one word, marriage is? Fill in the blank. Everything. Mm. I, th I think that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you said one. I was about to give a phrase. <laughs> I think that's I, I'll take it, but if you say it's everything, I mean, it is. You tell us, tell us with... why. Tell us oh, why. Okay. okay. <laughs> because, like I was saying, marriage has really taught me that it's either going to show me how to mature, or it's going to expose the immaturity in me. Mm. Um, marriage is also marriage has its good and has its bad, and and what's really marriage is what it is. It's what you make it to be. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that's what, when I say it's everything, it can be everything that's good. It can be everything that's bad. It's what you really create it to be. So that's what I mean by everything. It really okay. is. Okay. It's my everything. Uh, my uh, marriage uh, is my business. See, I want to say uh, that. <laughs> say it, my word. You know. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take everything. <laughs> All right, Dr. J. Thank you for taking it. It has truly <laughs> been uh, a pleasure. Thank you for joining us on the Couples Council LB, a.k.a. the Wife Coach. I am so honored that you decided to spend some time with us and share your wisdom with our audience. Thank you. Thank you again, LB. Um, we are going to stay connected with you because we just can't let you go. Uh, hell, who knows? We might need some of y'all in <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> but no, thank you again. This has been fun. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you for sharing with our listeners, providing some tips, tips, info, and just expanding what we do. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. Let's stay in touch. We will. Well. So that was Lakia Brandenburg, the wife coach, and her Dean Mercier, the wife mentor. Didn't we tell you it was going to be awesome? With a I little, just love it. With women little, supporting women. With a little sprinkling of the love mender. Yes. We, okay. we gave you a scene, baby. Yeah, you know, when two women get together, <laughs> you can't say too much as a man. You just kind of have to wait 
to the invite you. <laughs> okay, but that was good. You know, she's a lot of fun. She's yeah. a lot of fun, and uh, we're glad and honored that she uh, decided to come on the show and share. We don't have anything to add. We just want to highlight a couple things, right? This tame your tongue thing, mm -hmm. you know? You really like that, baby. Well, I like it because a lot of women need to hear that, <laughs> okay? But I, as a man, uh -huh. can't tell you that, uh -huh. right? It's much more effective and impactful when a, 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 another woman, right, tells other women that, uh -huh. right? Because they've lived a life. Yeah. So I appreciate her for that. Right. For yeah. doing and saying something I can't say. Mm -hmm. OK. And then the other thing that she touched on, you know, just because you're married, mm -hmm. it doesn't make you a wife. I know. You know, we've and talked that's about why that. We had to have her on the show. I found out about her through Instagram and I loved her ever since. Oh, yeah. She's she's doing a lot yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Just because you say I do, mm -hmm. right? That makes you married. Doesn't mm -hmm. make you a wife. Yeah. And so we had to chew on that and marinate on that. And we have some of the same conversations, but yeah. she packages it all very nicely and neat and concise yeah. and delivers it in a way that, you know, we can't. And, and relatable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, like she's a lot of fun. And you know, another thing that I loved about her interview, she told her backstory. Like she didn't come from a family that was well put together. There was some cracks. No, no. We had a real conversation. Yeah, like a real conversation. Yeah. And, and for her to share that and just say, you know what? But I changed my love story. Right. She did the and work. She did the work. And you got it. You, you, you got it. She did the work. She was willing to do the work. And we tell you, LB, thank you so much for being a guest on the yes. Couples Council. Yes. You are amazing. You rock and continue to do what you do. Yes, ma'am. I just love it. Yes, ma'am. So, guys, that's our show. We thank you for joining us on this episode. Um, you know we want you to connect with us. We want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, Dr. Jameson Mercier, The Wife Mentor, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter. Trust me, we read them. Uh, we, we, laugh at, we laugh at them. Uh -huh. <laughs> we reply. Yeah. Um, and MercierWellness.com. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have been visiting the website, Yes. You'll notice that some things have changed, okay? Uh, the shop is up. Yeah. The shop is up and open. So if you've been wondering, man, when can I wear and when will I be able to get a wife fit -in shirt? Or a man fit -in shirt or a dad fit -in shirt or man. a teen fit -in shirt and Work. other gear, workout gears. You hop onto the website. Tubblers, cups, mugs. Listen, just hop, Go onto, check the, it out. hop onto the website, get your swag on, get your merch and uh, you won't regret it. No. Now, and when you get it, don't forget to send us a pic so we can share it on our social media oh, yeah, no, we, def we definitely want to blast you guys for the support, not just for the podcast here, for coming back week after week and sharing and having the numbers continue to grow, mm -hmm. but just for being part of this community. Yeah. All right, guys. That's our show. That's our time. We thank you once again. Don't forget to follow us, Dr. Jameson Mercier and The Wife Mentor on all social media platforms. I thought you said that already. No, say it again. Okay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> this has been us on the Couples Council. Uh, we look forward to having you next time for another episode of the Couples Council. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to our mom and dad. If you like them as much as we do, then click subscribe and leave a comment. But now they have to go because it's family time. So go practice what you heard and we'll catch you on the next episode.